If you want to understand the layout of OBS Studio, this is the video for you. This is Leslie Samuel here from becomeablogger.com where we're changing the world one blog at a time. And in this video, I'm going to give you a tour of OBS Studio. Now, the best way I know how to do that is by literally getting inside OBS Studio. And I, I guess I'm literally <laughs> inside OBS Studio right now. I know that was kind of corny. Forgive me. Anyhow, where you're seeing me, this is the preview section. This is where you preview anything that you're going to be streaming live. Whether you're going live on Facebook or YouTube or Periscope, whatever the case might be. This is where you are seeing what they will be seeing. They're not going to be seeing all this stuff down here. They're not going to be seeing any of this stuff around here. Just what is in this preview window. Now, below this preview window, we have a number of things. And we're going to start over here to the left. Now, the first thing you're going to notice is that we have this scenes section over here. Sources, we have the mixer. And then over here, we have the transitions and a few buttons that will allow us to do a number of different things. We're going to start over here at the left with scenes. In the previous video, if you didn't check that out, make sure to go and check that out. But we spoke about scenes and sources, and we said that scenes can be made up of multiple sources. So we have one scene right now, and that's what you're seeing over here, uh, the, called scene. And over here, you can see the source is the webcam. Now, in the scene section, you, let's come down here. You can see that we can add a new scene, we can remove a scene, and we can move them up or down. So we can kind of change the order that those scenes are displayed. And then when you come over here to the sources, it's the same thing. We have one that I've already created, which is the webcam, but we can add a new source, we can remove a source, we can move it up and down, but there's this additional little gear icon, and that gear icon will take you to the properties for all of those individual sources. So once again, we have our scenes, and we have our sources, and the scenes are made up of multiple sources. And then over here, we have our mixer section. Now, what do you think about when you hear mixer? When I think about a mixer, I think about, you know, you're in a recording studio and I have these mixers with these sliders and all that good stuff where you control your audio. That's exactly what we're dealing with right here. The mixer allows you to control the audio settings for the devices that you add or the sources that you add. Now, the next thing you're going to see over here is your transition. So when I come here to the transitions, I can set whether I want it to cut from scene to scene or whether I want it to fade slowly or fade relatively quickly or number of different options that I have here. That's where I set how it transitions from one scene to the next. And then over here, we have a number of buttons. Now, some of them are pretty self-explanatory. For example, you have start streaming, whether it's to Facebook or to YouTube or some other platform. Then you have start recording because not only can I use this to stream live, I can actually use this to, to record locally on my hard drive. Let's say I want to record a, a, a multi-camera shoot with um, where I'm sharing my screen and I'm using my webcam and all kinds of different things. I can do that and not necessarily go live, just do it as a recording. Or I could do it as a recording while going live. I have all of those options. Okay, so the next thing you're going to see is studio mode. And studio mode is kind of fancy. It allows you to preview what's going to go out before you actually send it out. We'll talk a little more about that in a later video. And then we have the settings. The settings is where I'm going to set a bunch of different aspects of this software. The settings of the audio or the video and a number of different things where I connect to Facebook and YouTube. And I'm going to show you all of that in more detail in a later, later video. But for now, I want to show you one really basic thing in settings. So I'm going to go ahead and click on settings. And when I do that, it pops up this window. And one thing I want to do right now, just and this is just a preference. In the theme section, I can either set the default, which is what I have now, or I can set it to dark. I personally like the dark setting. And I like it because I'm used to programs like ScreenFlow and Adobe Premiere, and they are all dark. So this just make me feel, makes me feel kind of at home. 
All right, so that is the settings section. And then lastly, there's the exit button. And you know what that does, you exit out of the software. So that's a basic tour of OBS. In the next video, we're gonna go in detail into the settings of OBS so that you can see all of the options that are available and know how to customize it to your needs. So this is Leslie Samuel here from becomeablogger.com where we're changing the world one blog at a time. And until next time, take care and God bless. Oh, hey, really quick, before you leave, if you want to get access to my free OBS guide that will teach you everything you need to know about OBS Studio, you can do it in one of two ways. Number one, if you're in the U.S., just text the word OBS guide as one word to 44222. You can just take out your phone and do that. It's really simple. Or if you're not in the U.S. or you prefer to do it on your computer, go to becomeablogger.com slash OBS. When you sign up there, you're going to get my free guide and you're going to be able to get emails whenever I have something new and cool to share with you about building a blogging business. I think that's pretty awesome. Oh, and of course, this is YouTube. You can subscribe. Go ahead. You know you want to. And of course, there's another video. Just click it. I'll be there waiting. Go ahead. Click it.